Hi, I'm Dana Robinson. Welcome to Plumpy Thimble. Today we're going to be taking a look at a party game. And I want to take a moment and talk about expectations because in just about anything, overinflated expectations usually are a bad thing. And that goes for just about anything, any, especially forms of entertainment. We're talking movies, games, books. Uh, if there is a threshold that needs to be met in order for you to be satisfied with the outcome of that product, uh, you're set in the bar at a particular location and, and that product that you have not seen has to reach that point. Uh, so I think especially for party games, in my, in my experience, um, it's good not to have those high expectations because so much of it depends on the group that you're playing with. Now, high expectations are good to a certain extent because they get you pumped up, you're excited for something, and usually, I mean, if, it's, if it comes close to reaching that bar, you're still, you're still satisfied. You've had, you know, you've experienced uh, a level of enjoyment that you anticipated if it's something that you, especially like a franchise that you're familiar with, something like that. Now, it's important to point out that low expectations, in my opinion, are just as important because if you go into something with low or no expectations, you have a much higher percentage chance of getting blown away by something. Now, the game we're looking at today didn't necessarily blow me away, but it definitely blew away my expectations of what I was uh, thinking my enjoyment would be. Today, we're looking at the party game Mind Control. Now, Mind Control is essentially charades. Um, there's not much to this game, so I was given this. Uh, I was given a copy to play test, and I do help out at uh, our church's youth group, which means that every Sunday there's a large gathering of uh, high school students, and so I was able to test this out with the correct number of people that suggested. So it, it recommends uh, four to twelve players. I think when we play this, we had around twelve people. Essentially, all that comes in the box is uh, a sand timer. Whoops. A number of cards that have words on them and a, uh, a marker to keep score on a, a scoreboard that I didn't get in my copy, so that's nice. Um, but it, Okay, so you get these cards and then it's, you've seen, I mean, there's a million games that have this thing where there's a card and there's, there's words on the back of the card. Someone acts it out, people guess. I mean, that's the, that's the gist of charades. Here's the difference with mind control, and they take a simple concept and they, they package it in, in with, you know, they just wrote words on these, these cards. Um, but the twist is, the person that's uh, in front of the group, the person that is uh, performing in front of everybody that's guessing, has no idea what's on the card. Rather, um, there's someone out of sight of the people guessing that, is, that has the card, and they are acting out uh, whatever's on the card, and the person that's in front of the group just mimics whatever they're doing without knowing what's on the card. Uh, basically what it comes down to is it's a mixture of telephone and charades. And as silly as that may sound, in practice it works out really well, especially in large group settings. Uh, there's, there's not much to it. You can do this, honestly, you don't need to buy the game, but it's nice to have the words readily available, especially since there's multiple words per card. Some of these are difficult to get across to a group of people knowing what it is, let alone having to convey what someone else is acting out to a group of people when even you don't know what you're acting out. There's words like, uh, so for example, tuba, octopus, cobra, and loophole are words on here. There's um, uh, boomerang, showdown, sardine, headline. So what you got, I mean, some of these words are easier than others, but you don't know what you're going to get, especially when it's this race against time. Now, the standard play is that you've got uh, for instance, one person standing behind a couch of people that's facing someone in the front of the room, right? So it's one person conveying an idea to one person. There's a much more fun way to play this. And that is expanding that telephone network. So the most fun we've had with, uh, with mind control is when we took multiple people and we hid them around corners. So for example, uh, you've got one person hidden away somewhere in the house. They look at the card. They read the top word, and they start acting it out. Further down the line, someone else that can see them, as well as the person that they need to pass on the clue to, uh, starts copying whatever the person's doing, but maybe things are lost in translation a little bit. They pass that on to the next clue giver, who then copies the, uh, the previous person. They start acting out, doing whatever, until finally, the person that's in front of the group has now had this... this individual word on a card go through three different people before they're presenting their interpretation of 
what may be on the card, and they have no clue, and they could be doing something completely wrong, while the people observing take wild guesses. Uh, basically, you create this chain of people that are just seeing the person before them. So the source of the information is hidden from everybody except for one player. Uh, it can sometimes take 30 seconds for the message to be conveyed. The person that's standing in front of everyone may have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Or they may think they know what they're doing and try to get that idea across to the audience. The problem is, if they're incorrect in what they're trying to portray and they're just ignoring what the, the clue giver is telling them what to do, whatever actions they're doing because they got it in their head that they, they think that he's being a snail and when in reality he's being a sloth, they could really be costing their team points. It's a, it's a silly little game and if it were to cost a lot of money, I would not recommend it. However, you can pick this up for about eight bucks on Amazon, um, which is something to really consider because if you've got a group that likes this type of game, uh, and, and you know if you're the type of person that likes charades. Charades has been around forever and there are people that love it, there are people that detest it completely. Uh, it turns out we kind of like it and this game has been a lot of fun. So I do recommend Mind Control. If you're interested, check it out. It's on Amazon. It's Like I said, it's eight bucks. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.